Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Imagine the last time you used an elevator today. Now, close your eyes for a moment and imagine stepping into that elevator. You feel the smooth metal walls around you, but there's no clear way to identify which button to press. There's no announcement telling you what floor you're on or when you've reached your destination. You stand there, trapped in a space that most people navigate effortlessly. Yet for you, it's an isolating and disorienting experience. Now imagine that this isn't just a one-time inconvenience. Imagine facing this kind of profound uncertainty every single day in train stations, banks, hospitals, and public offices. This is the daily reality for millions of visual and hearing impaired individuals in our country, where accessibility is often an afterthought and independence is a luxury. It's a silent struggle, one that many of us overlook because we haven't experienced it ourselves. But it doesn't have to be this way because accessibility isn't a privilege. It's a fundamental human right. When public spaces aren't designed to be inclusive, they send a message to those with disabilities that they aren't welcome. But the truth is, any one of us could face these exact same challenges at any point in our life, whether it's through an accident, aging, or illness. Addressing accessibility now means building a future that works for everyone, regardless of their physical ability. Now, let me tell you all the story. I was 12 when I first truly understood what it meant to be visually or hearing impaired. It wasn't in a classroom or through a textbook. It was during a routine visit to the park with my father. As we approached the entrance of a park, I noticed a visually impaired man standing at the edge of a road, his cane tapping uncertainly as traffic rushed by. He couldn't cross the road without help, and it struck me that something so simple shouldn't be such a daunting task. This moment ignited a passion in me to explore ways to make public spaces more inclusive and accessible. Now, let me give you all some food for thought. What goes through your mind when you see a person with a disability? Oh, what a travesty. I can't imagine the sufferings of such people. Oh, poor guy. Sympathy. But guess what? They don't need any of it. They don't need your sympathy. They need respect and dignity. They need the chance to be seen as equals. They need the opportunity to be able to navigate this world as smoothly and as independently as us. Now, on that note, let me ask you all a question. How many people do you think suffer from visual and hearing impairments in India? Take a wild guess. Okay, I'll answer. Around 6.3 crore people for hearing impairments and 7.5 crore people for visual impairments, which brings it to a total of around 13.8 crores. Now, for some perspective, let's compare that to the population of Maharashtra. What do you think is the population of Maharashtra? 13 crores. Just imagine. There's an entire bunch of people out there, as much as the state of Maharashtra, which is unable to contribute to the growth of this country and ultimately the world, because we aren't able to provide them with adequate support. And there are statistics to quantify this as well. According to a recent study done by the National Institute of Health, mm -hmm. the estimated net loss of GNI, or gross national income in India, due to visual impairment alone, is 845 billion rupees. To put that into perspective for all of you, 845 billion rupees is enough to give every single citizen of India, the 1.4 billion people strong India, 600 rupees each. I'll give you all a moment to process that. What's even more concerning is that despite legislation like the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act of 2016, Many public spaces in India are still difficult to navigate. For example, most train stations in India do not have tactile paving for the visually impaired, and announcements aren't available in formats accessible to the hearing impaired. 
Now, for those of you who have been to Sweden or Japan, you all would have noticed that nearly all public spaces over there are fully accessible. They have tactile pathways, braille signs, and audio guidance integrated into their cities. For the hearing impaired, sign language is an integral part of public communication as it has been declared an official language in Sweden in 1981. I suppose most of the adults here would have been toddlers back then. Similarly, in the US, the Americans with Disabilities Act of 20, uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act necessitates the use of, of accessible restrooms, tactile pathways, and ramps in public spaces, and the use of automated voice announcements in public transport. And in Germany, every single public announcement and TV program must include either subtitles or sign language interpretations. All of these countries show us that accessibility isn't just a box to check. It's a way of making society more inclusive for all. So what can India learn from these global examples? Two key lessons stand out. A. We need to start designing our public spaces with inclusion in mind. Imagine if every train station in India had tactile paving, braille signs, and audio guidance integrated into them. This would immediately change the lives of millions of specially abled individuals, giving them the independence they deserve. B, we need to start leveraging technology as a tool for accessibility. Technology can be a game changer in bridging many of these accessibility related gaps. As mentioned in the UNCRPD, or the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which emphasizes equal access to public spaces. So all of these global examples made me think, what if I could make an instrument that can answer questions in simple language? in a human-like voice, that can offer answers in braille, that can communicate in sign language, an instrument that can empower the visual and hearing impaired. That was when my idea of the smart kiosk took shape. Imagine stepping into a train station or a shopping mall and being greeted by a kiosk that understands your needs. How easy would it be if I could just ask the kiosk Hey, kiosk, when is the next train to Dadag, and how can I board it? And I would get a simple answer that says 11.45 a.m. from platform number four, and so on and so forth. Or I could just walk up in front of the kiosk and ask it questions in sign language. Seems interesting, right? We are at a developmental stage, and the smart kiosk is designed to do all of that and more. By implementing smart kiosks across India's public spaces, we could help over 50 million hearing impaired and visually impaired individuals in India gain the independence they deserve. But it's not just about technology. It's about action. It's time we stopped talking about accessibility and started doing something about it. If countries like the US, Japan, and Sweden can prioritize accessibility, why can't we? Let this be our dream of a Vixit Bharat by implementing by prioritizing accessibility today, we ensure a future where no one is left behind. It is time to move beyond words. The solutions are right in front of us, inclusive design and collaboration. We just need the will to implement them. Whether it's through smart kiosks, tactile paths, or sign language interpretation, we have the tools to make the world accessible for everyone. So, as I leave here today, I challenge each and every one of you. Advocate for accessibility in your communities. Speak up when you see spaces that exclude others and be part of the movement that ensures no one is left behind. Together, we can create a world where everyone, regardless of ability, can navigate freely, independently, and with dignity. The change starts with us, and it starts now. Thank you.